this uh, session let's look at uh, pricing of derivatives and especially options one of the most important and most complex kind of derivative instrument right so we'll use different kinds of mechanisms to find the values of the option and uh, how we compare it with the market prices and few other aspects relating to the pricing of the derivatives so this is what we would cover in this session we'll have a brief introduction to what are derivatives and what are options per se then we'll talk about two major models for valuing the options or finding the price of the options we'll bring in a black scholes model and we'll also talk about a cox ross rubinstein model otherwise called as the binomial tree model so we'll talk about two different models conceptually we'll have an understanding of both of them and along with that we would also use r to really execute both the binomial uh, tree model which is the crr model as well as the black scholes model in r then we will also spend some time to try to understand what is the kind of connection between the models right we'll try to uh, demonstrate uh, using uh, the r functions how and when these two models come closer to each other and uh, as an extension we will talk about the greek letters which are the measures of sensitivities of the option very interesting aspect sensitivity of the option okay how does the option premium or option price change when the stock price changes or when the volatility changes or when the time to maturity changes so we'll try to have some kind of understanding on how we compute the greeks and what is the importance of each of these uh, greeks on the price of the option and towards the end we'll spend some time in terms of implied volatility concept and try to generate the implied volatility based on some stocks based on the options associated with some stocks and uh, we would also try to generate what we call as the volatility smile right so let's try to understand all these aspects both from a technical understanding perspective as well as implementation of the same in r right okay so just getting into a basic introduction to the world of derivatives the definition says they are financial instruments which derive their value from the value of the underlying so we have a stock as an underlying we have a bond as an underlying we can have currency as an underlying so there could be various asset classes which are the underlings and when i say derivative it's another instrument whose value is typically derived from the value of the underlings so derivative is not an independent product its value is derived from the value of another existing product and we also know that there are majorly four forms of derivatives the forwards the futures the swaps and the options so here the intention is not to talk too much about the forwards futures and swaps in this session our focus is more in terms of options and uh, they are different from the rest right all in all the three just as a quick summary in all these three both the parties a and b they get into a contract saying a will buy something from b and b will sell something to a at some future date but the price quality quantity everything is fixed today right and in this case both the parties they have to adhere to the contract they cannot break the contract whereas it is that option where one of the parties is actually taking an option 
to decide whether they want to go ahead with the contract or where are they want to get out of the contract so this is where we are saying in case of options we cannot be sure whether the transaction will take place or not when i am saying transaction buying or selling the underlying so whether it will take place or not there is some kind of uncertainty regarding that because one of the parties either the buyer or the seller will have an option to either go ahead with the contract or get out of the contract so because of this kind of an asymmetric behavior why asymmetric behavior one of the parties only it is mandatory to adhere to the contract whereas the second party can very well decide whether they want to get into the contract whether they want to continue with the contract or whether they want to exit out of the contract so only for one party it is mandatory to adhere whereas for the other party it is more and more optional so that's where i am talking about an asymmetric kind of a stuff whereas this kind of an asymmetry does not exist in forward futures and swaps both the parties who got into a contract will have to adhere to the contract so keeping that in mind then the uh, how to model this kind of an asymmetric behavior or non linear behavior right it's not uh, it's not a possibility of unlimited loss or unlimited gain there is a chance that one of the parties might cap their loss whereas they can get unlimited gain so this is what we are talking about a non linear behavior option is the only instrument where a non linear behavior exists so this is where there are different kinds of models which are typically employed to do the pricing of the option when i say pricing because one party is typically taking an option to decide at a later point whether he wants to continue with the contract or he wants to exit out of the contract that party who wants to take the option will make some kind of a premium payment to the other party so that the other party is giving this party an option right so if a wants to take the option a will pay a premium to b in the beginning of the contract so that extra payment that is done by a to b is primarily towards b giving a extra facility to a to decide whether he wants to go ahead with the contract or expire the contract because here b does not have the option b is obligated whereas b is giving an option to a by taking a premium in the beginning so this is where we talk about a non linear behavior and uh, whatever this amount a is paying to b to get that additional option is what we call as the option price or the option premium so whenever we use the word option premium or option price it is that particular amount which one party is paying to the other party at the beginning of the contract so that uh by paying so this party is taking an additional option to decide whether they want to go ahead with the contract or expire the contract at a later date so there are two kinds of models which are typically in use one being the black scholes model which works as a continuous process assumes that the underlying prices changes continuously whereas the crr model cox ross rubenstein model or the binomial tree model it assumes that the stock prices or any kind of security prices they are more discrete in nature they change at discrete intervals of time so let's look at both of them let's try to uh, find the value of the option or the price of the option in both the cases see what kind of differences both these models are typically bringing in so theoretically to talk a little bit about the black scholes model it is a direct formula it is based on the following assumption it assumes that the underlying asset 
follows a geometric Brownian motion. Right? One major assumption theoretically. It assumes the price of the underlying asset follows a 